Hello, my fabulous third gators. Here I am with another story time. And Nero's back today. Nero, say hi. Hi, bud. <laughs> All right. Miss Nelson is back. This is written by Harry Allard, illustrated by James Marshall. Uh-oh, Miss Nelson's coming back. What? Or she is back. Hmm. Miss Nelson is back. I think this story takes place in Texas because that looks like the Texas flag. One Friday, Miss Nelson told her class that she was going to have her tonsils out. I'll be away next week, she said, and I expect you to behave. Yes, Miss Nelson, said the kids in 207. Yes, this is in Texas because, look, here's this, this is the state of Texas, and it says Waco, Austin, Alpine, Corpus, Laredo. Those are all cities in Texas. But at recess, it was another story. Wow, said the kids. While Miss Nelson is away, we can really act up. Not so fast, said a big kid from 309. Haven't you ever heard of Viola Swamp? Who? said Miss Nelson's kids. Miss Swamp is the meanest substitute in the whole world, said the big kid. Nobody acts up when she's around. Ooh, said Miss Nelson's kids. She's a real witch, said the big kid. Ooh, said Miss Nelson's kids. I'll just bet you get the swamp, said the big kid. Now the kids are scared. On Monday morning, Miss Nelson's kids were all in their seats. They were very nervous. Some of them had not slept well all weekend. If we get the swamp, I'll just die, said one kid. They heard footsteps in the hall. Slowly, the knob turned and the door opened. It was Mr. Blandsworth, the principal. I shall personally take over this class, he said. Miss Nelson's kids were so relieved, but they soon learned that Mr. Blandsworth was not a lot of fun. All morning, Mr. Blandsworth tried to amuse the class with his corny card tricks. Oh, brother, said the class. That afternoon, Mr. Blandsworth showed the class his favorite shadow pictures. This is kid stuff, said the class. The next day, Mr. Blandsworth demonstrated his favorite bird calls. They were not a, su a success. And for two days, Mr. Blandsworth showed slides of his goldfish, Lucy. Miss Nelson's kids had never been so bored. While dusting erasers in the schoolyard, Three of the ringleaders of 207 discussed the situation. Something will have to be done, they said. We must get rid of Blandsworth. And they hatched a plot. After school, they painted and sewed and borrowed some old clothes. And they practiced some very difficult stunt work in the backyard. So we see them getting some sewing clothes and they're painting a mask. And then here they are. They're on top, three on top of one, two, three. And they're, hmm.
The next day, they weren't in class. That's too bad, said Mr. Blandsworth. They'll miss all the excitement. Mr. Blandsworth was about to show the class his collection of ballpoint pens from all over the world when someone came to the door. Slowly, the knob turned and the door opened. said the class. Miss Nelson is back. A tall and lumpy Miss Nelson tottered into the room. <laughs> Mr. Blandsworth was surprised. You're back sooner than we expected, he said. The tall and lumpy Miss Nelson didn't speak. Uh, said the kids. Her throat must still be sore. Are you sure you're well enough? Said Mr. Blandsworth. She's sure, said the kids. Well, in that case, said the principal, I'll be getting back to the office. Nice to have you back, Miss Nelson. And he left the room. Hot dog, cried the class. We got rid of Blandsworth. Now we can do just as we please. And at the stroke of 10, the kids from 207 left the building. No one stopped them. They went straight to the movies where they saw The Monster That Ate Chicago twice. This is really living, they said. Afterward, they went to Lulu's, where they stuffed themselves silly. But soon, they made a serious mistake. Heading back to school, they passed Miss Nelson's house. Miss Nelson couldn't believe her eyes. <gasps> Those are my kids, she said in a scratchy voice. What are they doing out of school? And who is that with them? Miss Nelson telephoned Mr. Blandsworth to see what was going on. You're not Miss Nelson, said Blandsworth. Miss Nelson is back. And he hung up. Can't fool me, he said. Hmm, said Miss Nelson. Something will have to be done. And she went to her closet. Uh-oh. Back in 207, Miss Nelson's kids were spending an agreeable afternoon. They were very pleased with themselves. We should do this more often, they said. They did not notice the figure out in the hall. Look what they're doing, doodling on the chalkboard, reading comic books and making mean, oh, making, I don't know what they're doing. Oh, bad, blowing bubble gums, the bubble gum. Slowly the knob turned and the door opened. My name is Viola Swamp, said the lady in a scratchy voice. Yipes, cried the kids. The Swamp! That's right, said Miss Swamp, and I'm here to whip this class into shape. Get back those, get back to those desks on the double. The class did as it was told. The big kid from 309 was certainly right. Miss Swamp was a real witch. She knew how to get results. The class did a whole week's worth in no time. Oh, I'm sorry, the class did a whole week's... <laughs> this is hard. The class did a whole week's work in no time. 
We shouldn't have gotten rid of Blandsworth, they said. Pipe down, said the swamp, or... Just then, something under a desk attracted her attention. It was a mask. Aha, said Miss Swamp. So that's your little game. And she tried on the mask, just as Mr. Blandsworth stepped into the room. Miss Nelson, said Blandsworth, I'm of the opinion that someone has been impersonating you. Uh-oh, whispered the kids. You don't say, said Miss Swamp. Probably just some kids acting up. I'm sure it won't happen again. And Mr. Blandsworth left. And it won't, will it? said Miss Swamp to the class. Because the swamp will be watching. A minute later, Miss Nelson appeared. I'm back, she said. Hot dog, cried the kids. Are we glad to see you? Didn't you have fun with Mr. Blandsworth? asked Miss Nelson. Ah, uh, said the kids. They decided not to mention Miss Viola Swamp, but they wondered why Miss Nelson hadn't seen her in the hall. Hmm. <laughs> Miss Nelson knows how to, she knows how to get those kids on track. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story. And say goodbye to Nero. Nero, say goodbye. Nero, say bye. Bye, bud. <laughs> Have a great day, boys and girls. Bye.